so I'm back here um, next day. Uh, I stitched as late into the night as I could last evening and finally had to shut the machine down, but I still have probably two, uh, two or three passes left to go on this quilt. Uh, each pass is taking um, about 25 minutes to go from left to right and then uh, you know a few minutes to rotate the quilt again, so approximately 30 minutes. And if I calculated um, last night, I think there were 14 different passes. So that's at least seven hours to do this one quilt. So I did as late as into the night last night as I could. And I'm back here the next day and I wanted to show you as well as I could how I realign the um, pattern uh, or the, um, the design on the computer to uh, where my needle is and uh, where my um, machine is on the quilt top. So. Um, I'll try to do that as best I can, try to get you in close to the computer screen without it being um, blurry or a glare, and uh, we'll see how well uh, I can do that and, and just show you how I line the um, pantograph back up today. So to start out with, I just wanted to show you how close to the end I am. I can see um, right here on uh, this front bar that I am getting the, um, the borders. This is the same peach border that runs down the side. It's towards the end of the quilt, so I know I'm almost there, and I know when I shut down the screen last night, it showed me that I had, um, that I was just about um, maybe the second from the bottom or so. So today when I turned on the machine, first of all, I bring up my workspace because yesterday, you remember, I saved um, the area that I was working on. I saved it as a workspace under the client's name with the date and the uh, name of the pantograph and the size that I was using. So when I first turn on the machine um, and I just bring up that workspace. So um, I've already got it pulled up here. Let me clear my my area. So now I have a, a blank screen. The, um, the crosshairs are just wherever they are. When I turn on the machine, I haven't oriented it to the quilt top yet. And so what I would do is I would go here to workspace. It shows me my workspace because this is the last one I worked on last evening. Then I'm just gonna click uh, the pink and brown one right there. And it brings up that same pantograph. It's the same size and uh, everything that I did yesterday. But my problem is, is right now I show that my needle is way over here to the left hand side. But when I look at the screen, it shows me that it's way up at the top and about a third of the way uh, to the right. So let me show you how I line this um, pantograph back up. So I'm gonna find a starting point. Uh, so first of all, when I shut down the machine last night, I did not rotate the quilt. I finished this last, uh, the pass that I did, and I left the machine right there so that I have a full design um, on the quilt top. And I am going to use that to line up where I need to be this morning. So I'm gonna line up my needle um, right on top. I can see where I cut my threads. This was a starting point for this pass. So I'm gonna line up my needle um, right over the top of um, that start point. I'm gonna pause right here and talk about my the foot that I have on here. This is, uh, Handy Quilter calls this their glide foot and um, it's a bowl shape. I use this on my machine almost all the time because this will slide right over any bumps, um, any applique, um, any, um, just it'll, it'll go right over anything. Where a different foot, if you use either a ruler foot or just their normal foot is a metal foot and it's uh, shaped as a circle, it's, um, the ruler foot's a little taller than the, the regular foot and it can just get caught on things. There's nothing wrong with that. If I was doing um, freehand, I might use that. If I was using rulers or something, if I wanted to get closer to the uh, red snappers or closer um, in, then I could use that smaller foot because it's not as big as this. But I almost always use this one. It just slides right over anything that's uh, in the quilt and I don't have any problems with it. So that's the reason for that. So I have lined up the needle right over the top of that start position, and then I'm going to come up here to my screen, and I want, um, I want modify, and I want to go to reposition, 
there. And then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to push start point. And what that did is it lined up my needle to the start point um, that was listed right here. So what I'm going to show you here is the way I reposition a quilt. I'm not saying this is the only way. I'm not saying this is even the correct way, <laughs> but this is the way that I reposition a pantograph um, when I start again on a second day. And um, so we'll just go from there. So I have pushed, um, I was on modify and I pushed reposition and I pushed start point over here on the right. What that did is put my crosshairs right at the start point at the top left hand side of that quilt. Now obviously that's not where um, my needle is, but it is um, in alignment with it. Okay, so I am now on the left hand side of the quilt even though I'm not as far down as I need to be. So next what I would do is I'm going to um, go down here to where it says nudge and I'm just going to move. I'm going to change this right now. It says a 0 0.1. Um, I'm going to clear that and I'll put like a 0.5 in here and that's just how big um, of a jump it's going to do when I push these down arrows. So I want to push the down arrow. Nope, I want to push the up arrow. It's um, and you can see when I push the up arrow it is moving uh, my crosshairs down that quilt. Now I don't, I'm not going to go all the way down to where I actually think I was just in case I'm off. I don't, um, I don't want to get to the bottom of the quilt and, and uh, run out of here. I want to, because I can crop off whatever is at the end when I get to the end of the quilt. So right now I am approximately on a green starting point which is where my needle is, is on a starting point. Each one of these rows is the same, so it doesn't matter which row I start on. I am going to change this nudge back to a 0 0.1, 0 0.01. And then I'm going to um, use this, the plus here. When I do that, it makes my design extra big. I'm gonna make sure I'm on pan up here and I, that allows me to move the design. And I want to see that uh, my crosshairs are exactly on that green dot. So I'm just going to increase the size again just to make sure I'm exactly on there. With this pantograph I have some leeway because I have space. This is where one pantograph ended. Um, you can see right here this is where one pantograph ends and this is the second one underneath. I have plenty of space right there that if I am not exactly on the same spot this is still going to nudge in there and I'm not, uh, I'm, I don't have to be precise on this one because I don't have any points that are matching up from one row to the next. So I am pretty much on. I'm not going to concern myself with that. I'm going to now, um, I'm just going to decrease. I could hit the home button and take it all the way back down to where I can see the whole quilt, but I'm not going to at this point. I'm just going to do where I can see most of it. Now what I want to do is I want to go um, further into the design and just make sure some other points along here uh, match up. So I'm going to take you back down here to the quilt. I'm going to go further down the quilt. I'm going to find a nice spot where there is a good point. So you can see right here there's a good um, point right there. That's a spot that I can find on the computer screen very easily. I'm going to set my um, red dot right on top of that and I'm going to come up here to my screen and to make sure I'm going to increase that and just to make sure that my crosshairs show me that I am right on that point and I am. So reduce it back down. I'm going to do a spot over here to the right hand side of the quilt too just to make sure I've not moved the bars at all, so there should be, if one side lines up, it should line up uh, the exact other side too. So I've got a point right there, lined my needles right up with that. I come back up to the screen. I'm going to increase my size just so I can see that very clearly. And I need to pan over. 
and you can see my crosshairs are right on that point as well. So I know my pantograph is lined up. So I'm going to reduce that again. And back over here, I'm going to take my machine back over to the left. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop here in the middle because I know I'm lined up on um, that spot on the computer right now. So now I want to advance the quilt. This is like I showed yesterday. I'm going to put um, my needle right over a point. Move that out of the way so you can see it. I have a nice point right there. Again, points are much easier to be sure you're direct on than if you were then if I would have chosen a point on this curve down here it would have been very hard to tell whether I was exactly on the right spot or not but I, when I pick um, a point then I know I'm on that spot so I hover my needle right over that spot I come back up here to uh, my screen and I want to hit drag and it didn't light up you'll know you hit it correctly if it lights up green so now what I'm telling the computer is I want you to stay right at that spot. I'm going to move the quilt, but I want the computer to stay right at that spot where I'm at. Okay? So at this point, I um, have my computer, I have the drag button stopped, so my computer is going to stay on that spot. But I can move the machine anywhere I want. It's keeping those crosshairs right on that spot, and this allows me to move the quilt, uh, to rotate the quilt up, and then I can hover my needle correct, directly over that spot again and then drop that point on the computer screen and then I have everything lined up again. So I kind of like to leave my needle in the general area. Um, what I don't want to do is move my machine over here and then I forget which one of these points I am really at because this same design is stitching out several times down the quilt and so if I move over you know 12 inches I have that same design again and I don't want to hover over that point because then I would be further um, on the pantograph on my screen but my needle is going to think I'm over there if, if that makes sense so I'd like to keep my machine in the general same area even as I rotate the quilt you don't see me push it off to one side or I don't have my needle down in the fabric it's not um, it's not dragging that fabric or anything like that. It's just hovering over that same spot. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate the quilt just like we did yesterday. And then we'll get started um, stitching out the next row. Okay, I uh, have advanced the quilt and I have basted down the both sides. But what I wanted to show you is one more thing. Because I'm starting a new pass, I need to change my starting point. Um, so I moved my crosshairs down to where my needle was, but I had not changed my starting point. So let me show you what I mean by that. So right now you see the uh, green circle is where my starting point is. Now I moved my uh, crosshairs down to where I wanted it on the quilt, but I have not changed my start point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Pro Stitcher, and I've got New Start and End selected, and I'm going to go over here to Auto. Now my um, crosshairs are sitting right where I want to start. Let me show you on the quilt itself. So I advanced the quilt. My last pass is up here. Uh, my last starting point is up here. I am ready to stitch in this area here. So I have put my needle on the starting point where I want to start, on that green dot where I want to start. So now I can go over here to Auto, hit Auto, I hit it once, and it moves the starting point down to where my crosshairs. I hit Auto again so that um, it does not move. Now when I move my um, machine over, it keeps that starting point right on that green dot where I wanted it. If I do not push auto that second time, then that starting point will move with my machine. If I would move my machine, that starting point would follow it. So that's why I have to hit it the second time. So I'm gonna line my needle up right over that uh, starting point right there, and I'm going to stitch out this row. So 
So I finished that pass and I have rotated the quilt and I am at the end. Um, I can see where I have attached the quilt top to my leaders. So what I need to check now is if I can fit one more um, design from here to here um, before hitting those pins. And so um, right now I'm at the bottom. So right here is the bottom. Uh, the last pass that I did, so I want to go up to my computer. See that that's uh, my crosshairs are right there at the bottom of that. So to do one more design, I need to go down that far on the quilt. I need at least that much room. So when I look down, no, I am into my leaders. So I cannot do a full pass without um, hitting those pins. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to baste the bottom edge of the quilt top down and take out those pins. Let me show you how I do that. So basically this is done just the same way that I baste down the sides of the quilt. Um, I'm going to start, I've already based down the sides to this point, so I'm going to put my needle down, back up just to pull up my bobbin thread. I am in a basting stitch. And I'm going to pull out the first few pins. I do this by hand. I do not, um, I'm hand guiding the machine. I'm not using the, the move setting on the machine. So when I push, I'm in a basting set. So when I push uh, the button on, when I push this button here, it starts the basting, but it only based when I move. So you can see here, if I push this button, and then I move the machine, then it'll do the basting stitch. So I'm going to move down the quilt. I'm gonna move down the quilt, removing the pins as I go. Now you'll see me, sometimes I will hit the um, button on my handlebar again to stop the stitch. Other times I will just continue pulling out pins and going right along. It's just how, control, how much control I feel I have of the machine. how close I am to a pin, whether I stop the machine, because if I would even bump the table um, and that uh, head moves at all, it would stitch a stitch. I'm just being sure that I get the leader out of the, out of the way prior to stitching. And I'm stitching just a scant quarter at a quarter inch from the edge of the quilt. Again, applying some pressure to the left hand side just to keep that uh, material flat. It is important when you're going over seams to make sure those lie flat. Um, I do advise quilters sometimes um, these seams you can see here let me move that out of the way if you don't stitch these seams down they can come apart a little bit you can see that a little bit these are stitched pretty well or just take a back stitch when you're seaming these two pieces together so that uh, there's when there's any tension pulled on it those threads don't come apart this one's done pretty well the other thing you can do is do um, a stay stitch all the way around your quilt top when you finish it and that'll just make sure all of those um, outer seams are um, nice and tight and don't pull apart during the long arm process. So now I, here is the bottom of my last pass. And if I drop my sewing machine there, my needle there, I can come up here to the computer. You can see that's where my needle is right now, so I need to be able to go down to here. That'll take me below the next pass. And so when I look at my quilt top, it's gonna take me 
off the quilt. Now some long arm quilters will crop the design to that point. I go ahead and stitch it. It's only gonna come over this much. I have plenty of backing fabric still. My backing fabric, there's the leader on the bottom. My backing fabric, I can feel it. Uh, that red snapper is like right underneath, right underneath the bar. So I have this much more backing fabric underneath there. So I have plenty of room to work with. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a full pass here and then I will crop the next row so that I get uh, any little pieces that need to come up um, into the bottom edge of that quilt. And I'll show you what I mean by that in just a second. Let's go ahead and do this last pass and then we'll be finishing up the quilt top. So we are on the last little bit. Let me uh, show you how we're gonna finish this off. So what I'm wanting to do is I'm wanting to stitch out uh, the design here and go off the edge of the quilt just a tad bit. Not all long numbers do that, but uh, I personally like to stitch off the edge of the quilt. And um, so what I want to do is create an area on my screen that will crop out the part of the design that's all the way down here that I do not want to stitch out. So I brought my needle all the way to the left hand side and I want to look on my screen to make sure I am outside of my uh, design area. And I'm going to go up here to the top, I'm on the area tab and I am going to push to corner. And when I do that, it creates that pink dot right there where my crosshairs are. Then I'm taking the machine all the way to the right hand side. I want to go outside of my design area again. I want to look up on my screen. Hopefully you can see this. To make sure I am outside of my design area, I wanna be a little lower than I was on um, the left hand side and then I'm gonna make that box larger. So I'm gonna go up here to um, my area and hit two corner again. And now I'm just gonna pull my machine back and show you what it's done. So it's created an area outside of my design over here, outside of my design over here, and it's only, mm, it tells me what it is. Um, right now the area is just under two inches tall, but I want to crop out this entire part that's down at the bottom. So I'm just gonna change this height, uh, I'm gonna clear that out, and I'm gonna go, I mean, I could go 20. And let's see, that's not quite gonna cover it, so I'm gonna change it again clear that and I'm gonna go 25. So now I can see that it's cropped out that entire part. So I'm gonna go down to um, just make sure that's where I want it. If I go right to here, so right now it's gonna crop out everything that's in that pink area. So right here at the top of that, that's gonna be as far as it goes. So I wanna make sure that's where I want it to be. So that's gonna to stitch to um, up here to right down here and then it's cropping out everything that's below there. So that'll be perfect. So what I'm gonna do is go. So I want to crop out what is inside that pink area. So I'm gonna go up here, I've hit modify and I've hit crop. And I wanna go over here to the right hand side and I want to crop out the inside. And you see when I did that, it took out everything that was inside that box. Now right now my I've got a lot of start and stops across that bottom edge of the quilt. You can see where that's lining up. So if I put um, my crosshairs on that line, it shows me that it's gonna stitch just off the edge of the quilt right there. So the other thing I can do to try to get rid of as many of those starts and stops as I can, I'm gonna hit this button right here to the side that says edges, and it cleaned all of those up. It's gonna... So it's got one uh, start over here, over to the left, one stop over to the right. So it's gonna continue, it's gonna stitch that can that um, pass out continuously, it'll just go on a horizontal line across the bottom. So we're gonna go back over here. And I'm just gonna make sure I am lined up 
again because I kind of touched the screen there. All right, so that is my uh, start time from my start point from the last time. That's where my needle is down here. So I want to go to the start point that's on the very bottom. I'm going to hover my needle over that green um, dot right there. I want to go to, I'm going to pan you out here. I want to go to Pro Stitcher. I want to go to New Start End, and I want to do Auto once. Now my machine doesn't always light up that circle, um, but just from experience, I know it's there. And if it's not, uh, I'll stop. <laughs> so let's hit Run, Needle up, and proceed. So it's um, took a, it's taken a stitch, and it's waiting for me to pull up that thread. So we'll let this. Uh, stitch. top is finished stitching so at this point what I will do um, I've already started here I will just cut the extra batting away I have not cut into the backing fabric all I am doing is um, is cutting the backing or the batting um, just underneath that last stitched edge and I just pull that out and fold it up and return that to the client since she provided the batting for this one. And again, that's enough. Um, there's enough there to, to use for something or to piece together. All right, so then um, the uh, quilt top is finished. I usually check the back before I will pull it off of the long arm just to make sure I don't have any um, any tension all through the stitching I'm checking this tension on the back but every once in a while you'll have something that I didn't notice when uh, when I was stitching it out and I will fix any of those areas I'm not going to go into that on this video maybe some other time um, but I do offer uh, trimming for all of my clients if that's what they desire um, because it's a lot or, a lot easier to trim this up when I'm, it's coming off the long arm than it is for a client to have to lay it out on a floor. Now, I don't necessarily square it up. I'm not measuring to make sure it's an, entirely square, but when it is on the long arm, because it's stretched taut, I can kind of see straight lines. So um, I'm basically just trimming up the bad, backing and the batting flush with the top. So let me show you how I do that. So I'm just going to start down here at this end and I am just trimming flush with the quilt top. All right and so then what I'll do is I'll unhook these back bar simply um, pull it out. It'd be easier to see down here at this end. So I will pull this out and then I will just trim 
straight up there, I can kind of see uh, the edge and how straight to make it. And I simply do that with both sides all the way up to the top. And then all of these extra pieces that are trimmed off of the bat, um, off of the quilt, you know, I'll have some pieces here. Those all return back to the client. The extra batting uh, returns back to the client. Any pieces that are, you know, two inches wide um, or so, I'll return all of those to the client because they can use something. They might use it for their, their binding. They might use it for another scrappy quilt or something like that. So that is how you long arm quilt. So that was a lot. We went through all the way how to, um, to load the, the quilt on the long arm, how to measure, how to um, set the area on the computer, how to begin stitching, how to stitch out all the rows. Uh, we've gone over a lot, and so I'm sure you have uh, lots of questions, but I hope that ans helped answer some th some things that you might, uh, or maybe you're just curious on how, how a long arm works. And so there you have it. Um, if you have any other questions, you're welcome to ask. And um, this is the way I long arm quilt. I'm not saying that everyone does it this way. Uh, some machines are different, um, just techniques are different. I'm always learning. There's always uh, new things to uh, figure out and improve on. So, um, but this is the way I'm currently working on things. And, um, and it's working well for me. So I do have a couple other questions that I thought might come up. Um, as you know, I am in a tight spot here. Um, my machine is 12 foot long. It's on a 12 foot table. And uh, my room is about 14 feet long. So um, if I need to get to the back of the machine, I do have to crawl underneath the long arm. And so for a long time when I would load quilts, I would actually climb under the long arm, go to the back side. Um, because the, the table is back there, it is a little easier to snap those, the red snappers down because I can push them actually on the table all the way down. And uh, with the arthritis I have in my hands, um, it's a little easier, but it is a little cumbersome to have to climb underneath the long arm. So I have learned to adjust and um, to load it from the front side. And so far I've not had any issues with that and that is working. The um, turn on button is actually on the back of the machine. So I do, I am tall enough that I can reach over the back and reach that button on the back of the long arm, but not everybody uh, may be able to do that. But I'm working with what I have and, um, and it's going well. I am in a, a spare bedroom in our home is what I am using and, um, and that's great. Maybe someday I'll have a bigger studio and, and I would welcome that, but right now I'm gonna use what I have and uh, it's getting the job done and, um, and just know that you too, I mean, you could run a successful business from your home in, in a smaller area and uh, by doing that, I'm able to be home and homeschool my kids and uh, be home with my special needs son. And those things are important to me. So um, we're making do with what I have. Another question you might have noticed, um, <laughs> because I'm in a smaller room, my door at the end of my room is actually not on hinges. So um, I can set the door up there to block the sound and the light from the rest of the house. And I have done that during taping. Um, you may notice if it was off to the side, it's because I've picked it up and I have moved it over to the side. I cannot put it on the hinges because the way the long arm is, it blocks part of that doorway. And so I cannot completely shut the door if it was on its hinges. So I'm sure there's going to be questions about that because you're going to notice that uh, where the door is and where my handle is. Uh, I, I know there's um, ones out there that you notice those things. So I just wanted to make that clear. And um, and another thing, uh, there are times when this machine is running that you will see me leave the room and I am usually going downstairs, I'm uh, checking on dinner or I even ate dinner during part of the time while it was running. Because this was a very long pass on this quilt, it was taking 25 minutes for that quilt for one pass from left to right to go. And so um, I will leave the machine for a short amount of time. now. My sewing room is uh, right at the top of the stairs, so even from downstairs, I can hear whether it's still running. I can hear if it beeps and tells me if it's out of bobbin thread or something like that. Um, and I don't leave unless I'm sure that things, 
you know, I've checked. Nothing's, <laughs> I've made mistakes in the past where I've accidentally left a piece of material on top of the quilt and it stitched it down or, you know, things like that. But I, I try to double check before I leave the room just to make sure everything is out of the way and it has a clear pass all the way down. If I am in the room, I am usually on the other side of the sewing room and I am doing um, quilting uh, piecing at my, um, at my domestic sewing machine. So it's a good use of my time. I can have the long arm running, but be close by and still be working on other projects at the same time. Not every quilt will it take 25 minutes for it to go. You know, some, if it's a smaller design, that's only three or four inches tall, it, it can, you know, take five minutes. And so not every design can, do you have that much leeway to be able to leave the room and come back. Sometimes you're, you're standing here right with it to make sure. So, um, those are the questions that I thought you might have that uh, might uh, come up. Um, if there are any others, uh, if you're interested in anything else, um, again, this is the way I, I long arm, you know, so if you have questions, if you're new to long arming and have other um, questions, I'm just a few steps ahead of you. And others of you that are watching this are way far um, beyond me, but um, just wanted to share how I go about things and um, what I'm doing here. And I uh, hope you've enjoyed uh, this video and or just like to see into uh, my life here and what I'm doing. So thank you for watching. And if you are needing long arm quilting services, I hope that you'll head over to my website, TammyErnestQuilting.com. And all the information is there that you need uh, to get your quilt to me. So I hope you have a great day and enjoy quilting.